In today's video, we're gonna show you how to build this portable livestock shelter. It can be pulled by just one single person or by a tractor or a UTV if that's the way you wanna move it. It will work for pretty much any livestock that you have, keeping them out of the rain, giving them some shade. We're gonna show you step-by-step -step how to build it. Links below to all the materials that we use in this build and all the tools as well. A couple months ago, I started designing and eventually built this movable livestock structure. The whole point of this structure was to provide livestock like sheep, goats, pigs, even a couple cows with a place to hide from the rain, a little bit of shade, and I wanted something that was easy to move even for just a person out in the field without any tractor or UTV. This structure I've been using now for the last two months and it's worked really, really well. So here's how to build it. This movable shade rain structure is built on two six by six skids. You could try to downsize to four by fours if you're worried about the weight of six by sixes. I can pull this along myself, no problem. But if you were smaller frame, maybe four by fours would do better. I think they would work just as well. I just went for the six by sixes because we have cows and I wanted a little bit extra mass in that structure. To begin this project, you start building the skids first because once the skids are attached to each other, it would be far too hard to work with. So start with the skids. So first step, we put a 45 degree angle. I used the speed square to do that. Then we came down to mark where it would start. We came back four inches so there's enough meat in there for the piece of rod that goes across and ties everything in. I marked four inches there and then this is a six by six. Six by sixes are actually five and a half inches. So the halfway mark vertically here to put the rod, drill the rod through is at two and three quarter inches. I put a cross there. We're gonna drill a hole. We're attaching these with a piece of all thread, which means we can put a nut and a washer on either side to lock it in place. The hole I'm gonna drill is going to be an inch and five eighths. We mark the skids completely. The one side you see here, we do the other side of the skid and there's two skids, so each end of the skids are all marked up. I've got my skids all laid out. Now it's time to make the cuts. I have a pretty big miter saw here. Uh, so I can make my 45 degree cuts with this. If you don't have a big chop saw, uh, you can also use a skill saw. With the marks, you should be able to go down either side of it. If you don't have a big enough skill saw to get through a six by six, you can use a chainsaw. Obviously be careful. <laughs> I used my miter saw to cut these skids at a 45 degree angle. I figured a 45 degree angle was enough of an angle so that they wouldn't run themselves into the ground. You could go with a steeper angle if you wanted to or a more gradual one. I just stuck with 45. Let's do this. Because I don't have a gigantic miter saw, I have to flip this, and uh, that's why I mark both sides, so I can flip it and cut the other side. Before you could speak, before you could weep, I held your hand. Here we go. The first skid is cut, well, the first side, and now we're gonna repeat this for all the other sides. For the great moon in the middle of June, falling up to the pull of the tide Though I've seen it before And I've ever been told Can touch this feeling inside you came I sanded these skids down just to take away a little bit of those hard edges that would get stuck out in the field. I used a palm sander. You could use a heavier duty sander. The palm sander worked okay, and the more I drag it around on the field, the more those things are getting worn down. Anyway, I just needed something to get rid of that hard line that would get, you know, caught out in the field. And our eyes align like the sun through the pines in a silent space in a cup full of time in these orderly ways in this disorderly life I let go of my hand in the jar I let go of my hand in the 
jar. I let go of my hand in the jar. Like some people, it's not as dramatic and the difference is it really happens. Um, it's not just something on the TV. First exposure looks like this. The flashlights and batteries laying around and, and stuff like that for when the power goes out. But they... All right, it's time to connect our skids together. I'm going to be drilling a hole with a inch and five eighths Forstner bit through the six by six. To do this, I'm gonna to have to drill through both sides, which is why I marked them the way I did. This is so I can run a piece of metal pipe through them. You could use metal conduit. It would have to be a very heavy duty metal conduit. You can use what's called all thread which is what I would suggest, a piece of all thread, and you'll see later we're gonna put some nuts, bolts. I've seen people set this up and connect the two skids with pieces of two by four wood. Uh, I know over time two by fours are gonna get worn out and weaker and fall apart. That's why I'm going with metal. I would suggest you go with metal too. So I'm gonna drill the hole and then you'll see how we connect it. You'll notice as I'm drilling, I use a couple different techniques. The first time I tried to drill with just this paddle bit. The next time I did a pilot hole with the long drill tip. Honestly, both of these didn't really work great. It was really hard to do. If you have a better way to drill through a big six by six, a better setup, share it in the comments below. I'm not the most skilled woodworker out there. This did the trick, but it was really difficult and it took a long time. So any advice is very welcome in the comments below. This bit is really important. If you use a piece of all thread, uh, what that means is it's a pipe that's all threads that you can screw nuts and washers onto. Uh, we had this piece custom made, but it's essentially just a piece of all thread. It's just smooth in the middle. Uh, you'll notice what I put here. I put two big nuts on the inside, and then you'll see one more nut goes on the outside. Two nuts, then a washer, then the wood, then another washer, and then another nut. You'll see why we have two nuts on the inside without a washer in between them in a little bit.
Getting the first skid on was pretty easy. Getting the second skid on was a little bit more difficult and it was very helpful to have an extra pair of hands. My father-in-law stopped by and gave me a hand putting this together. Uh, this is the one part of the project where it would be really helpful to have two people just to get it on smoothly. You're working with some really heavy pieces of wood. Honestly, the whole project you could use two people, but this part is kind of really important to have an extra set of hands. Thanks, Norm. Yes. Two nuts, then a washer, then the wood, then another washer, and then another nut is there to secure this all together really tightly. You take those two nuts and you sock them down real tight to the wood and it locks everything into place really well. You'll notice here that I am now attaching the paneling. This is just a piece of cattle panel. It's the cheapest paneling you can get at Tractor Supply. These are 16 foot long cattle panels and they're bent over the top of this structure to provide the cover for the animals. I'm attaching them to the six by sixes with fence staples. A heavy duty fence staples, it worked really good. The two by fours I'm using just as kind of like a dead man or a spacer, I put the cattle panel on top of the two by four, and that way it's nice and straight down the whole length of my six by six. You can use a two by four in the same way if you have a smooth floor that you're working on. If you're working outside in the dirt, this might not work as well, uh, but if you're working on a smooth surface, put the two by four down, rest the cattle panel on top of it, and just slide the two by four as I did out of your way as you're hammering in pieces. It'll keep that big panel level across your skids. It'll keep it in a safe spot. And I found that it worked really well. This is a toe strap that I picked up. It's a 15 foot long toe strap with hooks on both ends. This was important. I took both ends and what I did was just hook it to itself in between the two interior nuts. And that keeps it from sliding as you're dragging. This toe strap is nice and fat and wide. You can use it to hook up to a tractor. I've dragged this with a pair of forks on a tractor. I also drag it myself out in the field. You put it behind your shoulders. I have this nice thick tow rope, which I just throw around my shoulders. It's on skids. And just using my own body weight. Leaning back, I can drag this thing into a new paddock. It's big and fat, and uh, you can pull it along pretty easily with the shoulder strap, this toe strap. So that worked really good. Finally, we put the tarp on. Uh, this tarp, as you can see, is a lot bigger than what we were working with here. The tarp wound up actually being a 16 foot by 12 foot tarp. Uh, you'll notice the structure is about eight feet long, so that extra four feet hanging off the back makes a nice back wall, and the 16-foot tarp goes from one end to the other of the structure pretty well. So I suggest getting a bigger tarp rather than one that just barely fits because you do want tarp hanging down in the back to prevent a blowing rain from coming in. I attached the tarp to the cattle panels with zip ties. I actually wound up, as you'll see in the back of this structure, putting just a strip or two of duct tape to keep the tarp from being scratched and scraped on the sharp edges of the panel. Hopefully that prolongs the life of the tarp. I've seen people use pool foam, pool noodles. That would work just as well, or insulating tube. I tried to go with the duct tape because I just didn't have any foam no noodles lying around. I didn't think to get any. So far it's held up just fine. 
and zip ties. I didn't put the, uh, on video, I didn't get adding tape to the front of the thing, but I went back and added it later. So I, I have some duct tape over the sharp edges over the whole structure. That's the complete build. We have used this structure for our goats. We have a herd of six goats. They all fit in it very nicely. Whenever a rain comes through, the goats go run and hide under the shelter. I move it daily. I'm dragging this shelter just by myself every day out in the field. As long as the field is not uphill, it's very easy to drag. It's not a big deal, but I'm a big guy. So again, if you're looking to drag something like this and you're smaller framed, maybe go with four by fours instead of six by sixes. I have noticed that that back wall, zip tying it together, does not work for cows. We let our cows use it one day and they wound up pushing through that and ripping our tarp. So if you're gonna use this for larger livestock, like maybe cows or even pigs, you might want to make sure you don't have a crease in the back of your tarp. So maybe use two tarps so it's a solid back wall. Maybe even throw a piece of plywood across the back of it so it's something harder to keep the cows from trying to push through. However, for our goats, it worked perfectly, and I honestly feel this would work well for pigs, sheep, pretty much any livestock that you wanna have shade and something to get them out of the rain. The only thing you would wanna do for the larger animals is protect your tarp. Pigs, you might need to throw a little bit of plywood on the sides to keep them from chewing up your tarp. Adapt this structure to whatever livestock needs you have. So don't forget to check out the links below for all the materials. If you have questions about this, I check the comments section every day in our videos. If you're new to home study, be sure to join our email list. Click right there to do that. YouTube does not share all our videos with everyone who clicks the subscribe button, but we send out a weekly email featuring all the videos of the week. Don't miss any of our builds or anything else. Join the email list and uh, you'll be sure to see everything that we produce here at home study.